What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I have today my first slider set for Madden 25. And once again, of course, this is for CPU versus CPU. I have been working at this slider set for so long. I have been just testing and testing and testing. And I cannot say that I have a perfect set yet. I don't believe I can fix the quarterback accuracy. I have tried from everything from all the way down to 15 up to 45 and everything in between. I've jacked up the defense. I've turned down interceptions. I've had interceptions up. I've turned penalties up. It doesn't matter. Fact remains is that you're going to have games with this set where your quarterback is going to have uncanny ability. And I just cannot change it. I wish I could. So as normal, make sure that you do not have anything set in franchise. You want to have this set on your main menu. And then you want to import it to your franchise. I'll show you how to do that once I show you everything. Uh, first thing is penalties. Now, I took a little bit of a different approach this year. I wanted to try and have a set where you could still get certain penalties and actually have that be a determining factor in the game without making the game play bad. So I do have a few of them turned up. I have offsides and false start both turned up to 60. Offensive holding and roughing the passer, I tried going above 50 on, and every time I did, it became almost every other play. So unfortunately, it's either you have them or you don't. It do you don't get a lot of them on this current set right here. If you want to try and get a few more, I would maybe go to 51, 52 in the franchise file, because of course you can only go by fives on the main menu. But do not go up to 55 or above, because every time I did that, I would have you know, six or seven holding calls a game. Same with roughing the passer. Players weren't even tackling guys and getting called for roughing the passer. And I'm not joking. The quarterback would not even fall and they would get called for it. So again, if you want to try and test it, maybe go 51, 52 in your franchise file separately from this, but do not set it to anything higher than 50 in this main menu setting. Defensive pass interference is turned down to 30. We all know it. Right now, the game is not very good when it comes to man or zone defenders. They just do not know what they're doing. I think my slider sort of fixes that. I see some pretty good stuff. I'm still seeing interceptions. I tried to find a sweet spot between interceptions and, and good quarterback play, and I, I'm hoping that I found it. I'm still seeing some interceptions. I'm also not seeing four picks a game, which is what I was aiming for. Everything down here is on except for illegal contact. I noticed when I had intentional grounding turned off that a lot of quarterbacks were dropping back 10, 15 yards and taking sacks. And for whatever reason, since I turned this back on, it's not happening as frequently. It still does happen from time to time, especially on like play action plays where like the, the pressure's coming as soon as they sort of set their feet after the fake handoff. But it's not happening a lot, which is what I wanted to get rid of. So turning on intentional grounding for whatever reason seemed to fix that. I once again, I'm not touching the, the player sliders. If you guys want to match these up, feel free to go ahead and do that. I just don't touch them because we are not playing the game. There is no user input in the games that I play for CPU versus CPU. So these sliders have no indication on that. That is my belief. If you want to match them up, what I would do is just match them up with the exact same thing I have for CPU. And speaking of that, this is the settings that I am at right now. QB accuracy all the way down to 18. And yes, I'm still getting quarterbacks with 70 to 80% completions, depending on the game. There are other games where you'll get a 45 or 50% completion. So towards the end of the season, it may sort of even itself out. But I, I just, this is what I'm, I've settled on and I, I'm happy with it right now. Wide receiver catching down to 47. This allows receivers to not completely catch everything thrown their way, but also doesn't make them drop stupid passes that they should not. Run blocking up to 65. I'm noticing players go from between four and a half to six yards of carry, depending on the running back, of course, and the team. And I'm actually seeing some decent amount of runs. That's been another issue with Madden this year is way too many passes per game instead of running. Now, this, of course, also depends on your playbook, but I have noticed that I have a good mixture between 15 and 25 runs per game. And my, my running backs are actually averaging some good stuff, especially if I do run inside. Ball security, I have turned down to 39. Um, I'm seeing a couple of fumbles. I'm not seeing too many of them. This one is something that could potentially be adjusted in a future update. I do plan on doing an update video to these sliders. As for right now, I have them at 39 and I haven't had any issues that I have noticed. Defense, this is where I had to ramp things up. I had to turn down interceptions to 20 because they were getting four or five a game. But if I didn't have reaction time and pass coverage juiced up a little bit, they just were not covering players. So I have them both turned up to 60 and I have tackling turned down to 45. 
everything else is on default. Going back over to the game options, I'm running 12 minute quarters on 13 second runoff, okay? I am also running placement as my passing type. This is supposed to be the one that relies mostly on ratings and I'm still getting some pretty high, high games. But this is what I'm running it on. If you guys wanna copy this, I don't know if this has an effect on, on CPU versus CPU, but if you are wondering if it will, make sure you set it to placement. I have it on medium and seven. I have ball hawk, heat seeker assist, and defensive switch assist all turned off. And then here are the sliders that I have for the other four categories. Injuries at 22. I am getting some injuries to my starters that are taking them out of the game, and I'm getting my other running backs in. I'm, I'm seeing some other players get involved. Again, this is another one, just like fumbles, that I will probably be adjusting later on, depending on how I see things going with my franchise. Fatigue, I have turned up to 60. The speed parity scale turned down to 35. And then the physics-based tackling results, I put to 52. What I've noticed by dropping tackle to 45 and this up to 52 is it allows running backs to actually break a few tackles and have some interesting plays while also allowing good linebackers to still make the stops that they should make. And here are the games that I've been seeing with these slider sets. Of course, some of them were changed around towards the beginning because I was trying a few things out. But I am seeing games sort of all over the place. There's games where I, I can win or lose by two scores. There's really close games. There's low scoring games altogether. Um, it's been, I would say, a pretty good result so far. I was getting some really high scoring games when I had interceptions turned up a little bit more, but that was because quarterbacks were throwing four picks a game. And while that can happen, I mean, we're talking about guys like Jared Goff, Brock Purdy, CJ Stroud, you know, quarterbacks that are, are maybe not, you know, Tom Brady level right now, but they are rather good quarterbacks in this league and in Madden. So they should not be playing like that. And I wanted to try and make sure that if I play a good quarterback, they should be playing good. And here is sort of the stats just from like this last game. So we had a 106.4 rating for Sam Darnold. He had 297 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. He had a 74% completion. And then Trevor Lawrence which is one thing to note, I also did pass again, like medium pass for defense. So I was sort of, uh, so I did have a really good defensive strategy against them. And he ended up only getting 58% and one touchdown, but no interceptions. And then for instance, this was Ty Chandler's day. He ended up coming in because uh, Aaron Jones was hurt. 24 carries, 121 yards. I also did run inside as well. Um, but as you can see, like, you're gonna get all sorts of different things here out of these books. And also some of this, again, is going to rely on the books you're using. Some books just do not work. That's the way Madden has had these systems built for a long time, and I don't know if it's going to change. And then here was another game. This was against the Colts. And then in this one, both quarterbacks had an interception. Sam Darnold um, had not as good of a day. He had 65% completions. Richardson had 73. There's just going to be a lot of back and forth when it comes to the way the games are played. Um, and here was another one. This one was where Aaron Rodgers had 80% completion. Sam Darnold had 57. So there are differences that you're going to see depending on who you play and what kind of team you have and, and all sorts of things. My Vikings shouldn't be really defeating a whole bunch of teams all the time. Um, I mean, we went on this four game win streak, but this was also my second or third season that I ran of testing. And the, the season before I was like one in 12 at one point in the season. So it will give you some type of different results. And at some points I was seeing, you know, scores of games being like seven to three, almost near halftime. And then I was also seeing things where it was 21 to seven at some point very early on in the game because of, you know, a turnover or something like that. Very quickly before I end this video, a few things I wanted to let you guys know again. One, this is for CPU versus CPU. Two, this is without abilities on. I do not have abilities turned on for Superstar and X Factors. Three, I also do not have home field advantage turned on. And four, I have progressive fatigue turned off. I ran a season with progressive fatigue and once again, as soon as week 12 hit, all of a sudden my team started dominating and something was off there because the CPU just wasn't handling things properly. So I turned it off. 
and it's just something I'm gonna have to deal with. I also tried to make these sliders to where I could play games and I wasn't always leading in all the categories. And as you can see here on this screen, Dallas Turner has nine sacks, but there's nobody else that is in a top three position at any category. Not that it's not possible, but I wanted to make sure that I wasn't having sliders that made my players the top of the list all the time. That's why it's at 12 minute quarters. And that's why some of the plays like you're going to look at it and it's like, wow, I'm only running 50 plays. I tried to keep up with the sim engine as best as I could, right? Because I want you to feel like you have something special when your player is leading the league in something. I don't want it to feel like, oh, well, of course my player is leading because I'm playing more. This set should hopefully help you give some balance there. You might see some a lot of sacks in some, you know, in some games and in some players, but you're not going to see, you know, everybody having five interceptions, six interceptions. You're not going to see every quarterback that you have leading the league. You're not going to have your running back over a thousand yards by week eight. And you're going to see a lot of balance there. And it's going to have to be a grind to get your team there in CPU versus CPU. I'm using the Vikings, of course. And as you guys know, they're not the best team in Madden. They're not a bad team either. 85 offense, 81 defense. They don't have a horrible team, but they don't have the best team either. And I'm still able to have, you know, quality players and quality stats like Dallas Turner up there leading like second in sacks with nine and 12 tackles for loss. There is going to be some things that are not going to sit right with the rest of the league. Okay, this this whole system is just not designed well enough for a, a single player to play franchise. It's just not. I, I don't know how we've gotten so far into this game like over the years, and they have not realized that a lot of players, especially the ones playing between like maybe January and June, when like it sort of dies off a little bit, are all solo players playing franchise. But it, it's just not designed for it. And I tried to find a good happy medium between quality gameplay, but also stats that could match up with what the rest of your league is doing so that you don't have to feel like you have to play every game or you don't have to play with other people to make it make sense. So that is the set that I have for now. I will be doing an update to this because I know Matt is gonna be coming out with an update relatively soon and I'm sure something will change on the slider sets. And again, this is not a perfect set. I have worked weeks trying to get the pack passing accuracy in line better. And honestly, I don't think there's an answer to it. I would have five games in a row where I have like 85% accuracy for quarterbacks in the game. And then I'd have another ga a game where they have 40%. And I finally thought I was getting somewhere and finding a happy medium, have a good game or two, and then boom, right back up. And then I had a good medium where the, the passing accuracy was in line with what I was shooting for, which is between 64 and 70. And But then every quarterback had like 15 interceptions before week 15. And it's just, I just decided to choose the, the lesser of the poison. And this is the set that I came up with. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, let me know down below. Before you leave, hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that bell notification. And I will see you guys next time.